Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans from around the world, welcome to the electrifying atmosphere of the Open Tunes Boxing Arena. Tonight, we have a clash of titans that will leave you on the edge of your seats. In the red corner, weighing in at about this big, we've got the undefeated pointy tool that you see in many image editing and animation programs. The selection tool. And in the blue corner, and roughly the same size, is a tool that looks nothing like you've seen elsewhere and sounds like it's only used for animating. Here is the pride of open tunes. It's the Animate Tool. For years, these two tools have been misunderstood, misused, and confused with each other. So today, we're going to step inside the squared circle to settle this long-standing debate once and for all to discover which tool is the best for which task. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Round one. So starting in the red corner with the selection tool. Choose it from the top here on the toolbar. And then on the options toolbar, choose how you're going to select an area because the selection tool can work on just a small part of your drawing so choosing the rectangular option select in the frame where your drawing is then draw a rectangle around Dranko the dog and now i can use the selection exactly as you might expect so i can just click and drag to move it i can resize it by clicking and dragging on these corner squares or on one of the squares on the edge or if I hold the shift key and drag on a corner the width and height stay the same ratio which is really handy and I can also rotate it by moving the cursor near to one of the corners and by default you rotate around the center of the image but if you don't want this in the center you can see this little marker and you can click and drag that to anywhere on the image and now when you try to rotate it'll rotate around that point really handy However, do be aware that once you click away, the image is re-rendered onto the screen. So if you rotate again, it'll rotate from this position, and then slowly, after a number of changes, you'll see the image degrading. And there's a knockout trick that you may not have seen before in other software, and that is, if we highlight this, if you hold the control key as you go to the side of the selection, you can then shear the image to move it up and down like this and if I undo that and towards the top you can shear left and right and if you hold control near the corners you can shear from the corners which is so useful to twist an image into perspective BAM! and you can also flip the image once it's highlighted using these buttons on the options toolbar to flip horizontally or vertically or you can just change the size by typing directly into these boxes. Lots of ways to change the selection. But this only works one image at a time. So if I go to the second drawing, you'll see that that isn't affected in any way and nor are any of the others. Not until you get to the repeated drawing number one here on frame seven. Not a bad opening salvo from the selection tool. So, onto the blue corner and the animation tool. How does that compare? Let's just change to one of the frames here on the animate tool column, which is the Dranko dog on the right hand side here. And then select the animate tool from the very top of the toolbar. And the first thing you'll see is that there's no way to choose how you select. In fact, with the animate tool, you don't work with just part of a drawing as you do with the selection tool. You work with all of it. In fact, it's not really the drawing that you're changing at all. It's all of the drawings in the column. That's this drawing in frame number three, all of the following drawings, and surprisingly, all of the previous drawings in this column. So you can see that the first dropdown contains the column name that we're affecting. And the second dropdown is the important one that you'll want to change. And this lets you choose how you're going to change the drawings. And notice in a second, as soon as you do something, you'll see a key image appear on this frame in the timeline. So let's use position first. And then we can just drag the drawing around. 
to wherever we want it to go to. And notice the key appeared here on the timeline. And if you change your mind about any of the animation tool changes that you make, you can always just delete this key. So just select it and press the delete key and you'll notice that Dranko Dog jumps back to his original location. So this also means that using the animate tool to move your drawings is non-destructive. So you can always revert back to the original. So next thing, let's change the scale. Simply select scale and then click and drag from the center and you'll see the size change of Duanco there. Or we can change the rotation. So again, click and drag to rotate him. But notice that you rotate around this marker in the center of your canvas. If you want to rotate around another area, simply choose the center option, click and drag that to where you want to rotate from. And then when you choose rotate and click to rotate, you'll rotate around that point. And as a non-destructive action, you won't lose any clarity when rotating, as you do with the selection tool. But often, the easiest way to change your drawings is to use a different option, the All option. And this brings up a small pink widget here, which matches the tool icon onto the canvas. And with this, you can drag the center point by clicking in the center of the widget. And then you can just reposition by clicking anywhere on screen and then dragging Dranko anywhere with him. Or you can resize him using these scale options here. Just click and drag on those small handles to scale either both horizontally and vertically or to scale just horizontally or vertically. Or the right hand side, you've got this skew option to skew him in one of the two different directions. And for rotation, you've got the option at the top here to click and rotate on that handle. And again, if you want to rotate around a different point, just move the center point to where you want to rotate around, and then that's where the rotation will happen. And again, you've got the option to flip your image using the buttons on the tool options bar to go horizontally or vertically. And you can type values into these boxes to make a change. So with those changes made, you can look at the other images in this column and you'll see that they're adjusted too. Pow! So for this round, I'll have to call it a draw. Both tools have got lots of useful features and the selection tool is best to edit a single drawing while you draw and the corner adjustment is invaluable, so do make sure you try that out. And the animate tool is great for positioning all of your completed drawings, whether it's a background or a sequence of images. So it's on to round two. Round two. So for this round, let's make the two Dwankos bigger than the camera area. So first, in the red corner, we use the selection tool on the left hand Dwanko. Let's click and highlight him. And then we can scale him up, holding shift on the corners to make him larger. And move him just outside the view. So he's just peeking inside the camera area, which you can see by this red rectangle here. And then if you click away, notice that anything outside the drawing's canvas area is lost. And this is because when I created these drawing levels, I made them the same size as the camera. And using the selection tool, you can only have the drawing within the canvas area. And I made a video about that a few weeks ago, which you can check out just up here and from the description down below. But what about the animate tool? Well, in the blue corner, let's pick a frame in the column that we're going to use with the animate tool. Choose the animate tool, change to the all option. And then if we move the center point onto Dwanko, I'll resize him to make him large like I did with the first dog and move him just outside of the camera view area. And I can't click away to deselect him, but you can see that he's shown inside and outside of the camera area. So if I show just the camera view, you'll see where he's cut off there. So now I can adjust him and not worry about losing part of him. So I can rotate him, resize or remove him like that and I won't lose any of him. Whack! And this also affects the following drawings. So again, it makes it easy to reposition him or reuse your animation after you finish with it. So for this round, I have to give it to the animate tool. With the selection, you can only resize within your canvas area 
and when you do, it's a destructive change, so you can't restore back to the original drawing. But with the Animate tool, you can resize and move the drawing anywhere inside or outside the camera and it doesn't break the drawing. Just delete the key to restore the original drawing. Plus, if you've got a sequence of drawings, adding one key on this column aligns them all. And if you're finding these tips useful, do drop me a comment below and let me know what other tools you'd like to see battle it out. And do hit like so this video can spread to other users. So let's finish this fight with round three. Round three. So with the selection tool, as we've already found out, moving one drawing only moves that one drawing. So if you want to Dwanko the dog here to run across the screen, you'd have to move each drawing individually to get him to run across the screen. And that works pretty well. However, we've got the drawings repeated. So there's only actually six unique drawings. So when we get to frame seven, we show drawing number one again, which is actually just another exposure of exactly the same drawing as is shown on frame one. So a tip here to help you spot this is if you zoom out of the timeline enough, as I have here, to show the drawing numbers, you'll see when drawings are repeated on the timeline. But if you're too zoomed in, so that you see just dots for individual drawings, it's hard to tell which are unique drawings and which are duplicated drawings. So try to keep the timeline zoomed out enough to see the drawing numbers. But how does the Animate tool cope with this? Well, as you expect, this is where the Animate tool really excels. So if I go to frame one in the Animate tool column, choose the Animate tool, and I'll change to the All option. And on frame one, I'll place Dwanko Dog just outside of the screen. And notice the first key that's added in frame one there. And then if I zoom out a little, so you can see the end drawing there. And then if I move to frame number 30, and then click and drag Dranko to move him just the other side of the screen. So if I hide the selection tool column and then and go to the first frame and then hit play, you'll see Dranko running all the way from right to left. Knock out. And this is something that the selection tool just can't do. And do try out both of these tools. They're both useful for different tasks, even though they might seem very similar at first. And thanks to my Patreon supporters. Don't forget, you can download this project from Patreon so you can experiment with the tools as I have here today. And do comment down below to let me know which of these tools struck the knockout blow for you. And let me know which other tools you'd like to see battle it out. And if you want to see how to use the Animate tool for parallax scrolling, check out this video just here. And I'll see you all next time for another video. And that's... A guarantee.